church family. Good morning, friends. Happy Thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord uh, one more time. And if, if I might, let's just dive right into the word of the Lord. Coming from St. Luke chapter 17, verses 12 through 19. St. Luke chapter 17, verses 12 through 19. And it reads as thus, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way, thy faith have made thee whole. And for a subject this morning, I just want to leave you with grateful, being grateful. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you and we give you, Lord God, the glory and the honor and the praise for being God in our lives. We thank you, Lord God, for the word, Lord God, that's been read thus far, Lord God. And even now, Lord God, I, I just decrease, Lord God, that you would increase in this place, Lord God, and say what you desire to say, Lord God. I submit, Lord God, to your will and to your way because you alone are God and beside you there is no other. Be glorified, be magnified, and be lifted up in all that, that is said and that is done in this place, O God. It is in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen and amen. Grateful. Just being grateful in this season of, of, of thanksgiving, man, thinking about all of the things that, that the Lord um, has done for us. And, you know, it's, it's easy in this season, man, to, to become pessimistic. It's, it's easy to think pessimistically. It doesn't, it doesn't take a, a whole lot of energy to do that because very often we have a propensity just to gravitate towards pessimism, especially in, in this year of, of 2020 where there's been so much bad that has happened. But, but through it all, man, there's, there's been a lot of, of good that has happened. God has has made ways simply out of no way. You know, that that thousand has fallen at our side and, and that 10,000 has fallen at our right hand. But it but it has not come nigh us. And and for that, we we ought to give God some praise for that. We we ought to thank God for that. We ought to be grateful to our God. And and in this season of Thanksgiving, man, I, I was thinking about some things that um, that I, I should be grateful for. And, and the first thing I thought about was, man, I'm, I'm grateful for my life, health and strength. I'm, I'm grateful for the, the activities of, of, of my limbs. I'm, I'm grateful that I have a, a, a wonderful mental health at this point, if you will. I'm, I'm grateful uh, that, that COVID-19 hadn't come to, to visit me. I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that, that I'm gainfully employed in a time where so many are not. I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that I, I still have a roof, man, over my head and, and clothes on my back and a, and a little something on the table to eat. I'm, I'm grateful that I haven't had to stand in a, in a food line to, to meet the needs of, of my household. Man, I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that I, I still have the ability to stay connected um, to those that I love via technology. I'm grateful for the fact that our church is, is still linked 
during such a time as this and, 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 and we can come together uh, via the electronic platforms even though the building is, is closed. I'm grateful for the fact that I haven't had to bury a loved one in, in this season of COVID whereby they had to die alone. You see, I, I, I understand some of that. I had to bury my father this year, but I'm thankful that even in the midst of that, I had the opportunity to, to bury him and, and to celebrate him amongst his friends, uh, amongst his family, during a time where we could still come together in the house of the Lord uh, to, to celebrate him because so many haven't had that opportunity. So many uh, uh, people have died alone in this season. And so I'm, I'm grateful for those things. And so even though I, I lost my, my father this year, I'm grateful that, that I was able to lay him to rest in a way where, you know, he could be celebrated, he could be spoken, spoken over um, for, for the life that he lived, praise the Lord. And uh, when we look at this season, when we, when we look at this text, uh, there were some lepers, praise the Lord, that, that should have been grateful for what God had done in their lives, that had the opportunity uh, to turn and, and, and tell God, thank you for, for what God had done in their lives, but only one out of 10 thought enough of what God had done to, to turn back and say thank you. And, and I want to go and, and review the text again, starting at St. Luke chapter 17, verse 11 and 12. It said, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a, a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Now they stood afar off because as a leper, you were cast out of the general population. You couldn't hang out in the community. You could no longer dwell among your, your family and friends. Kind of like what we see with this virus today. There's a, there's a lot of isolation. There's a lot of quarantine. And th 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 there's a, 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 a lot of, you know, spending time alone, if you will. And, and, and in those types of times, it, it tends to diminish uh, re relationships. In fact, for the, for the leper, uh, the leper had to walk around announcing himself unclean, unclean, unclean. Thus, in this season, we, we tend to appreciate family a little bit more. We tend to appreciate friends and, and community a little bit more. We tend to appreciate relationships a little bit more because of the isolation, you know, but for these, but for these lepers, they, they had no choice but to be isolated from the community. But for the grace of God, they had no chance of, of being healed. And, 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 and so as, as, as God began to, to heal them and, and they begin to, to go and show themselves to the priests, we, we find that, that one was thankful enough to come back and say, God, I thank you and I praise you. And so verse 13 says, and, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. You see, the fact that they prayed to Jesus shows that they already knew who he was. That they knew he wasn't just some guy, just somebody around the way that, that they grew up with, that he was in fact God. Thus they knew where to go to get what they needed. And this desperation brought them all together because, listen, in, in normal times, you, you wouldn't find the Jew and, and the Gentile congregating in the same place. You wouldn't find the Jew and the Samaritan congregating together in the same place. But a need a desperation to be healed, a desperation to be made whole, brought them all together. Thus in verse 15, it says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. You see, out of all of the people that glorified God with a loud voice, you would think it would be the Jews. 
You would think it would be those who, who grew up in the synagogue. You would think it would be those who grew up being taught the laws of the Lord. You would think it would be those that were of the seed of Abraham that would come back and glorify God and magnify God. But very often those of us who grew up in the family tends to take the family for granted. But the Samaritan knew that this man, Jesus, was different. He knew that there was something very different about him. He knew that there was something that, that something that happened in his life that nobody else could do for him. That there was something that, 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 that God did to the degree that it caused the, the, the Samaritan to come back and glorify God with a loud voice. To glorify God with a voice of praise. To magnify the Lord our God. And you, and you see, when, when, when you're truly thankful to God. You don't care what people think. You don't care what people see. You don't care who's in the room. You don't care how loud you are because you, you, just, you, you, you just come to God and you give God, you know, his praise. You give God what belongs to him. You see, when you're truly grateful, nothing else matters for the Samaritan. Nothing else mattered. He just went and gave God what God deserves, which was a praise unto the Lord our God. He thought about what God had done. He thought about the fact that, man, listen, nobody else could do what he had done. And he turned and he made a joyful noise unto the Lord. You know, I've told you time and time again, if, if you're going to, to, to give God praise, very often you do it with a loud voice. You do it in the midst of praise. You don't do it silently. And so the Bible says that the Samaritan ran back and he gave God praise with a loud voice to the degree that after he praised him, he kneeled, on his, he kneeled down at Jesus' feet and worshiped him. And Jesus answering said, were well, there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They're not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way. Thy faith have made thee whole. Jesus said, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Thus to call him a stranger is to say that Jesus didn't know him. It is to say that they had no relationship. It is literally to say another race, that this is another race of people. And the truth is that this was more of an indictment against the Jews than it was against the Samaritan. That was certainly an expectation that if anyone would be grateful to God for the things that that, that, that he had done, that it would be the Jews and not this stranger. You see, the Jews knew him. The Jews grew up in the synagogue. The Jews were taught the ways of the Lord. The Jews were the natural seed of Abraham. You see, we who know Christ, we who have received him as Lord and Savior, should never allow the world or those who don't know him to receive more honor from him, from God, than the believer. The stranger shouldn't be more spiritually minded than the believer. We should never become so comfortable with God that we forget to tell God thank you, that we forget to glorify God, that we forget to lift up his name. We should never become so comfortable that, that God could give more honor to a stranger, to someone that don't know him, than those that say that they love him, that those who say they serve him that those who have confessed him as Lord and Savior, because there's an expectation by God that the believer would thank him in everything and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And so he said, wait a minute, there were 10 that were healed. Where are the other nine? 
And so I'm thinking about this season and thinking about all of the things that God has done. And I'm spending time thanking him. I'm spending time glorifying him. Because when you begin to thank God for all of the things that he has done, God, you made a way where there seemed to be no way. God, you, 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 you kept a, 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 a roof over my head during this season. God, you, you kept a, a little food on the table. You kept a few dollars in the bank. You kept us from this, this cold virus, God, when I think about all of the things that he has done, man, all I can do is say thank you. Sometimes I don't have the words, and so I'm just grateful for the things that he's done. I'm grateful for the victories that he has won, and what it causes me to do is to cry out with a loud voice and worship him and fall at his feet and glorify him. Because if if the saints of God doesn't do it, who will? Well, I guess we know who will. Maybe it's the stranger. Maybe it's those that didn't that didn't grow up with the, the oracles of God. Maybe it's those that didn't grow up in the house of God. Maybe it's those that are unchurched that come to realize that God is doing something during this season. But listen, don't let it be said that that the world worshiped God. Greater than the church did. Don't take God's goodness in this season for granted. Don't take what God has done for us for granted in this season. Thus, it behooves every believer to have a grateful disposition when it comes to serving and worshiping our God. You see, thanksgiving to God reminds me of my status, right? It reminds me of my status. Well, what's that? That I am the creature and he's the creator. Praise and worship to God reminds me of my status, that I am the creature, and he's the creator. When I fall down on my knees to pray before the Lord, it reminds me that I'm the creature, and he's the creator. Too often we get what we want from God and and never return to tell him thank you. But the Samaritan, the one who didn't grow up in the synagogue, the one who who the, the one who didn't grow up receiving the oracles of God, the one who was hated by the Jews. Recognized the major difference between him and Christ. And what he recognized as a Samaritan was he's the creature. And God is the creator. For there is no one else that could have done this. There is no one else that could have healed me from leprosy. There is no one else that could have got me back into the community of folk where where, where, where I could begin to, 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 to build relationships. There's no one else that could have gotten him back to his family where he could put his arms around his family once again. There's no one else that could have gotten him back to his children where he could put his arms around his children once again. And so he recognized that he was in a that he was in in the place where the creator was doing something to the creature. And we must always remember that we are the creature and never the creator. And when you remember that, it will keep you on your knees. When you remember that, it will keep you with your hands raised up. When you remember that, it will keep you in a place of praise and worship that we are simply the creature and not the creator. Too often we get what we want from God and never return to tell him thank you. But the Samaritan did just that. And what he got from that was not only physical healing, but spiritual healing. Yeah, the, 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 the Jews got physical healing. And God knows when we go to God, we, we all want physical healing, don't we? But listen, man, don't, don't forget the most important thing. You're going to God for physical healing, man. Listen, don't don't leave without spiritual wholeness. Because that's what God desires to do. God desires to to complete the whole man. 
God desires to, to fix the whole man, not just the physical part of us, but the spiritual part of us even the more. Listen at what the word of the Lord said in, in 3 John 1 verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou would prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. There's some things going on there. There's some physical and some spiritual healing going on there. But then 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23 comes back and says, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, thus there is no doubt that the nine received physical healing. But they missed the most important part. And that was the healing of their souls. See, we, we, we can be physically whole and still bust hell wide open. But I want to be complete. Jesus said, listen, your, your faith has made you whole. The fact that he turned back and said, God, I, God, I, I thank you. God was able to do something with that to the degree that he didn't only, he didn't only go back to the community physically whole, but he went back to the community spiritually whole. He went back to the community a new man. No doubt when he went back into, in, into the community, they saw something totally different. Not just physical healing, but the way he walked, the way he talked, the way he prayed. Because he was new. He was totally complete. And we are complete in him. He turned back and he recognized now listen, man, this is, this is one of those times where you know nobody else could have done this but God. Where you know that I'm in, the, I'm, I'm in the presence of the creator. I'm in the presence of almighty God. And I'm going to thank him. I don't care who sees it. I don't care who hears it. I don't care who knows it. I don't care if folk think I'm about to lose my mind. I'm going to cry out with a loud voice and praise him and worship him for all the things that he has done. We, listen, we can go day to day to day and forget to tell God thank you. I, I attempt to tell him every day, thank you for something. Thank you for something that you're doing in my life. Because there's still so much to thank him for, saints. There's still a reason to be optimistic. There's still reasons to be grateful. There's still reasons to be thankful. In fact, he told us in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Be grateful, saints. Be grateful for the things that he has done, for the things that he is doing, and for the things that he will do. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for the opportunity to be able to open our mouths to say thank you to be able to put our hands together and clap before him, to be able to put our feet together and run on his behalf. We thank him because he's worthy of all our praise. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you and we give you, Lord God, all of the glory. We give you all of the honor. We give you all of the praise for being God and God alone. We pray, Lord God, that in this season, Lord God, we would take the time to, to say thank you. We would take the time to, to demonstrate, Lord God, how, how grateful we are, Lord God, for the things that you have done, that you are doing, and for the things that, that you will do. Help us, Lord God, to, 
examine and, and re-examine, Lord God, your greatness, Lord God, as the creator in our lives, Lord God, and help us to understand, Lord God, that we are always the creature and never the created. Thus, it drives us to our knees. Father, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise for being God. And God alone in our lives is in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for visiting us at Cup of Salvation Online. As you listen, we pray that God was able to reach you, teach you, and set you free. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear more of God's word. And if you'd like to sow into the work we're doing at Cup of Salvation, please go to cupofsalvation.org forward slash give. God bless you and we'll see you next time.